Welcome back to WWE 2K22, my GM mode. I am your host, Attack Slug, in the lead by a mere 35,000-ish fans over SmackDown and William Regal. And the goals we have for today on this particular show involve Kofi wants a promo and John Cena wants a match. And those are the main goals. But Triple H says, have my most popular face and heel dudes fight each other. And that gives me a contract negotiation power card. Do I care? We'll see. What is TLC? One match will get higher than normal for 50k? Nah, I think I'm okay right now on that bit of business. We have almost 200k in the bank which is honestly not that much looking at these prices for anybody else to bring in and also to unlock things like road crew. That's 37K right there, right? We could use it certainly, but man, oh man, oh man. Money is an issue now. And as a reminder in the ratings, I am above a little bit. And in the money, I am just about now even with Regal. He spent big at the start and I did not, and we'll see how that pays dividends going forward. Let's try to book a shot. Now, what if we actually wanted to do what Triple H said? And we wanted to book our most popular face and heel male superstars. So, who is, all right, 77 for Drew. John Cena is 71. Where's Brock Lesnar? He's a busy, he's 75. So I can't even do what Triple H wants me to do because Brock is resting up for this week to hopefully fight Joe at the premium live event and finish that feud there. That's kind of an issue, right? But we can, we can book some stuff here and I don't know what just yet. Let's finish the fight between Asuka and Bianca in that main event. It is level four now, as is Owens and Balor. And yeah, Bianca and Balor, their stamina is not particularly great, but if we finish those two feuds on this show, that's fine by me. And judging on popularity alone, when you look at Bianca and Asuka versus Owens and Balor, we're going to get that, that top spot to Owens and Balor to finish their fight, finish their feud, and ideally, backing out here, ideally... Uh, the next challenger for McIntyre will indeed be Finn Balor, but he's kind of banged up right now. So it has to be done, and therefore we're going to do it here in the main event. So Balor, Owens, one last time. I would love to chance it on the injury, but no, we're not going to do that. I don't want to have an injury to Balor, who should be challenging Drew next up. Win, lose, or draw on that. So we'll do that. And we must book John Cena on this show. So John Cena, you're up. Who can you fight? Randy Orton and John Cena. It can't get any more picture perfect than that. At least they got that right in this game. I can't have John Cena and Brock Lesnar, but I can have John Cena and Randy Orton. The classic feud. And those two will have a tables match because they have a pretty good stamina overall. So bump up that match rating a little bit and give John what he wants. We also, speaking of, need to give Kofi Kingston a promo. Now, the problem I have with this is that I can do a call out and that only counts for singles, I'm pretty sure. So I can't just say, hey, I'm going to call out Chad Gable, but that'll start a solo thing between those two and not actually increase the level of the feud between the tag teams, I'm pretty sure. Now, if I'm wrong, put it in the comments, but I'm pretty sure you can't actually further a tag team feud through having them do a call out promo. Therefore, as long as he has to cut a promo, guess what, Kofi, you're doing some charity for me and increase the fans by 5K. So we open the show with that, Asuka and Bianca, and it's non-title because look, I don't want to risk Bianca winning the belt when she's that banged up and injured. So after this, some well-deserved time off, I do believe. So that is a non-title opener and no gimmicks in that match. 
Meanwhile, in the mid-card, we're going to have the continuing feud between Beth Phoenix and Trish Stratus. They had that excellent Extreme Rules match yesterday. Did quite well. So that's that mid-card match booked up. Let's see here elsewhere in the promos. Who do we have? Well, we can so we can keep having McIntyre cut promos, I guess. Because otherwise, man, I don't know. So Drew needs a challenger as he increases his popularity. And also on that self Promo, I suppose if you have one side being Kofi Kingston, the other side should indeed be Chad Gable. Or, wait, all right, Gable is a skill of two. Meanwhile, Kushida is a skill of three. You want more than less, so Kushida cutting that promo, going back in time, and all of that business. So, that's a 20 grand show right now. But we still have our logistics, so now it's a 35 grand show. Now it's a 45 grand show with our Capital Wrestling Center, and we got our optional bonus. Now, Road Crew, I'm gonna go with the one that actually has the bonus here in the middle. So we're gonna do that one there. It's cheaper. And the lighting, lighting, lighting is all right. Lighting 10 to 15, 10 to 15. I'll take a 15. And advertising, I don't want 25. So let's just do local signs and flyers because I'm not going to spend more than 65 here on this program. Now, otherwise, free agents we've seen, le legends we've seen, and we kind of can't afford much of anything with those. So what is superstar training? Emerging talent to become a permanent senior superstar for 30 grand. Um, wait, so is that the jobbers become permanent, or is it my free agents I signed become permanent? I could use a permanent Brock Lesnar, but for 30 grand, do you risk it? Do you risk it? You know what? Let's get risky and buy this for 30 grand and then try it. Oh, it's just for the jobbers. Well, look, I don't want either of these jobbers, to be honest, because they're both kind of terrible. But I spent the money. Therefore, I suppose I'll bring on Tim Burr as a permanent jobber on this brand. Not great, but what can you do? We're down to 168. Let's run this show, shall we? So, the final encounter between Asuka and Bianca. What do we have? Can they deliver? It is a three and a half star contest that should hopefully finish that rivalry. Now, Kushida cuts a promo. It was good. Plus two, mid card, Beth Phoenix, Trish Stratus. What do we get between these two? Beth Phoenix, again, victorious, three stars. The Scottish Warrior cutting a promo, excellent, plus four. Now, tables match, John Cena, Randy Orton, we got to do what we got to do. When it comes to matches that we've seen entirely too many times, John Cena and Randy Orton is certainly up there in that pantheon. But I still say they're at a certain point there. Uh, last year, the year before, there was a moment in time where the thing that made the most sense would have been getting Randy Orton to a 16-time world champion to fight John Cena as the 16-time world champion, had the belt be vacated for reasons, and then have them be the first man to break the Ric Flair 16-time. With Flair at ringside would have been the thing to do for a mania moment. Clearly, that moment has passed. Not going to happen now. But good lord, for a hot second there, it seemed like that would have been the match to do for a Mania main event. Would have been historic, and they went in a different direction and didn't do that match. So, what are you going to do? Now, of course, some would argue, do you ever want to break that 16-time record? Do you ever want to make Cena champion and have him be the 17-time champion? Considering where uh, Persona Non Grata that Ric Flair is currently, sure, yeah. Like, have that erased and have Cena be the guy, because you aren't ever going to run into Cena doing the helicopter on an airplane. I would hope. I would hope. I don't know for sure. Anyhow, here we go. 
Randy Orton, John Cena. It's time. And then we get the Orton pose. Okay, the spotlight. Even there, looking pretty good. Well, the lights anyway, doing that, reflecting on Randy Orton. So, let's get down to it, boys. In this corner, John Cena. In that corner, Randy Orton. It's going to be table time for someone. And we're going to find out who. Belly to belly. So, yes, there is the RKO. Yes, there is the attitude adjustment. But we know table match means table time. So neither could happen. You never know. But let's get into it here in this tables endeavor. The back suplex. Randy going upstairs, uncharacteristic of the Viper to do a dive, but calling for that wake-up taunt on John Cena pretty early here, and the flying crossbody from Randy Orton. Staggering, stunning, and from behind, from behind, nice on that suplex. And now Randy going for the hardware as he has the early advantage here on John Cena. But we know in this game that tables can break at any given time on any given move. So it could be anything but vintage Randy Orton right here with that draping DDT. Down. Not quite on that table, but down. Sure. And Randy with this early advantage and perhaps going to hit that RKO and then put John Cena through a table. Now, if it was me... I'd have that avalanche RKO through a table, but hey, on the exposed steel, in front of the table is just rough stuff. Absolute rough stuff. And Randy in the lead here, and the stomps. John Cena now with that table, firmly in control, hits Randy Orton with it, and then puts it in that corner. The match can now end at any time, given the Irish whip and or a power bomb. So uh, this could be over for Randy here real soon. But Randy is almost at that zone. He's almost there with the voices in his head. John Cena's fighting back. Whips the punch. Orton, Cena, Orton, Cena. A uh, more vintage Randy Orton backbreaker. And now Orton is ready to hit those Garvin stomps and or the punts and or get another table for reasons beyond me. He's doing that. So, double tables in the ring. John Cena hitting that taunt and a ba at bad timing. Bad timing. Uranagi from Randy Orton. And that wasted his SIG. The Garvin Stomps got wasted. Now, John Cena has finish. And that could come out of nowhere for John Cena. He's just that good. You never know. But these two are so well trained against each other. Now, both man has a finish. It could be the countdown to the RKO and or the attitude and or the table spot. So, here we go. Oh, John Cena with the code red. Fantastic. And here comes something or other. John Cena now putting, oh, didn't get it, didn't get it. Orton says, nah, -uh, John boy, that ain't happening. Today, into the table goes John Cena. Randy Orton now whiffs his move. John Cena back on it. A staggering back and forth here. Can John capitalize? Attitude adjustment. Who the table? John Cena. A do, 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 do. The match for the ages, folks. One more time, we saw John Cena and Randy Orton. And John Cena victorious, as you might imagine that he would be, given that it is indeed John Cena. So, there we go, folks. One more down. Let's continue. Three stars, new rivalry. Alright, sure. There is the obvious Cena contractual concerns there, but a new rivalry. Now then, Kofi wanted his promo. Please deliver on this. It was okay. It was okay. Alright, now then. The finale, I hope, of Balor and Owens in your main event. What do we have? Kevin Owens 
victorious in a four-star amazing match. Is that enough to defeat William Regal, who still... Regal cannot book his champion because he's also the tag team champion and stuck in a tag team rivalry because too stupid. So, Mandy and Tamina versus Alexa and Becky, who is back on the show finally. And Alexa is still 35 is not, not good. So, tag team winner. Normal match. Regular style. Becky and Alexa win that matchup. Three stars. Level two. Call out Natalia calling out Alexa. They're both pretty banged up from those matches. So here we go. Week. Week. The mid card. Book and Ilya here are pretty banged up. But hey, the champions are Eichner and a happy Corbin. A Baron two belts. Three and a half on that match. Dakota Kai cutting a promo. It's good. Plus two. Titus and MVP are back at it again. Titus O'Neil wins two stars. That grows to level three. Otis cuts another promo. Regal. That does zero for Otis. He's been doing it every freaking week. And the main event is Swerve and Walter. One more time and time and time again. It is Volta. And it is a two star mediocre bit of deal. And look at Monday Night Raw. Beating three out of the four segments, we did pretty good, and nobody got hurt. Can the same be said for Friday Night Smackdown? Poor opening for Smackdown. And no, they're still not being injured just yet. So, alright, okay. 105 and 53 on the fan change, and we're up to 233 now in our revenue. So that actually made money for me, which is... Good, we need that. But Randy Orton is perfect for tables matches. Do it again. Hey Raw, what happened to Timber and Mr. Higglesby? Let them fight. Who is this weirdo who wants to see the jobbers fight? What the hell? Started strong, ended strong. I liked it. Now, did that finish up my rivalries? That is the question. So, 97 and 46. For SmackDown, which means I maintain that lead on the show. So, Natalia embarrassing herself on the mic yet again. Yay! Okay, SmackDown is number two. 1643 and 1600. I am now ahead by 43,000 ish fans. Two weeks until TLC. Uh, here come the contractual demands. Trish Stratus has a deal that is up. How much does she want? 114k is beyond my budget. So how about 79k, Trish, to stick around, please? Please? All right. Got lowballed, took the offer, and is still here. Thank God. Joe in the Brock feed. We need to pay Joe. So how much does Joe want is the question. Oh, please don't be a lot. 97K. Uh, you know what? That sounds reasonable, Joe. Please don't choke me out. Now I'm broke. Now I'm broke. Don't call him Samoa. That's weird. Okay. But we need Joe and we need Brock. That's a big money match. Beth Phoenix also up. Can we underpay her? I am out of money here. So what's the deal with Beth Phoenix? How much do you want? Because Beth and Trish, 102K. How about 71? Please stick around. Please. All right, same as Trish, stuck around. Thank God. Mr. Higglesby, I don't care. So how about $4,200? If you don't like it, you, you can leave. The offer was taken. Balor is psyched for pay-per-view. Can't wait to find a great show for the crowd. That was all he said? Okay. All right, so Asuka, Asuka, Asuka. Amazing growth, staying humble. Um, wants a bonus. Uh, yes. 50 grand for a bonus. Look, man, I'm gonna have no money. I'm gonna have no money. So, it helps. Major increase. I have zero dollars. I have zero dollars. It has gone to zero. That's gonna be a regal kick in my ass next time. My lead about to vanish 
all those contractual renewals bankrupted me, that's a problem. So we'll see next time how I handle working with a zero in my budget. I'm a tax lug. Actually, no. First, first, before I end the show here, uh, did the feuds end? No. Owens and Balor are still level four. Okay. Bianca and Asuka. Why didn't it end? Can it only end on pay-per-view? Is that how that works? I don't know. We're going to keep on doing it because those matches deliver uh, next time on the show with a budget of zero. So I'll see you then. I'll see you here. I'm a tax lug and I'm out.